am in love with this house. <laughs> Thank you. That's how I felt when I first saw it. And then I fell in love with the neighborhood, which is why I'm so concerned about Daco. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything from Crawford Beale? Oh, the planning commissioner guy. He was at the queue. Oh. Yes, he's, uh, he's looking into it. In the meantime, I'm in the market uh, for a way to blindside Damien and to remove him from the Port Charles financial community for good. And I was hoping that you might be able to help me. I don't really know Damien Smith. Yes, but you knew his father, and perhaps you have some information that links Damien to the more criminal aspects of Frank's operation. If I do, it's subliminal. I mean, I suppose I could always undergo hypnosis or something. Well, that won't be necessary. I was kidding. Well, uh, you know what? Actually, we were, we were hoping that there might be another way to make that connection. Oh? Yeah, through Sonny Corinthos. You know, I, I know this is probably a sticky wicket for you with Luke and Sonny being partners and all. And I'm also sure you're wondering who is this broad and how dare she question me in my own living room. But you see, I got an investment in this too. I mean, you guys are concerned with Damien and the threat he poses to Charles Street. Well, I'm concerned with Sonny and the threat he poses to LMB. I see. And you think because Luke and Sonny are partners in the club that I may know something that connects Sonny to Damien and... Ultimately to Frank? Exactly. I will. I, I don't. Uh, I, you know, I actually knew more about Sonny when Frank was still alive and, and Sonny was working for him, but since he died, he uh, plays it pretty close to the vest. And if you tell you the truth, you know, I don't want to know too much about this, except where it directly affects my family. Will you at least keep your ears open? Well, if your suspicions are right and Damien is somehow connected to his father's business, then he poses more of a threat to this community than I thought, so... Yeah, sure. I'll keep an ear to the ground. Thank you. Ditto. Hi, is Spencer? Is Lucky here? Uh, no, you just missed him. He left early this morning. Holy rat. Would you like to come in? Oh, is that okay? Well, sure. You don't seem like you're in a big hurry this morning. Well, that's probably because I'm not. It's hard to start a new school in a new city, isn't it? In a new state. Probably don't know this, but I'm kind of shy. Actually, I sensed it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of a shy person, too. Especially on the inside. It's hard to make friends that way. Yeah, well, I've made a few. Yes, lucky and fly among them. Yeah, but you know how it is. I hit that playground, the guys get all weird. See, if you have a friend who's a girl, then the other guys will make fun of you. So, we don't really spend a lot of time together at school. Ah, uh, let me guess. Something like, uh, Lucky and Emily sitting in a tree... K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> Guys can be pretty goofy, can't they? Oh, they sure can. I expect they'll grow out of it someday. Don't count on it. <laughs> so, how's life at the Quartermains? Is everything okay? It's all right. Just all right? Well, everybody's pretty busy, which is really good because... If you put them all in one room together, you know, usually means... Fireworks. Yeah. I <laughs> <You> know. <laughs> well, because I used to work for Edward, I was the world's worst secretary. <laughs> <laughs> and to see that family function, or should I say dysfunction, uh -huh. really is a sight to behold. Uh -huh. 
But I do think that Monica and Alan are really extraordinary people. I know. And I think I figured them all out. Something happens and I get all confused again. Sometimes I, I think I was picked up out of my world and just plopped down in the middle of somebody else's. I feel more like Dorothy and Oz than that nutty Lucy realized when she asked me to play her in the nurse's ball. You know, I know we haven't known each other for a very long time, but um, I have really good instincts. And I know that you are a wonderful, bright girl. Otherwise, my son Lucky wouldn't have chosen you for a friend. And I like your family, too. And I kind of have a crush on your husband. I think he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, too. <laughs> when I don't feel like strangling him. So, um, Lucky's Aunt Bobby, is she your sister? Luke's. Oh, right. What's she like? Bobby? Yeah. Uh, she's, uh, very unique. She, she, she's really a very nice person. She just likes to, uh, leap before she looks, um, and she kind of insists on doing things her way, which can really get on a person's... Actually, you know, she and Luke are an awful lot alike. They're really cut from the same cloth. Why do you ask? Oh, well, um... Bobby's really good friends with Ellen and Monica, and I'm trying to get what my mom used to call the lay of the land, because, you know, it's pretty hard to fit in in a place like that. Emily, let me tell you something. I know for a fact that Monica thinks the world of you. I know. They say all the right things at the right time, but, you know, it's like my mom used to say. It's not what you say that counts, but what you do. Like Ned. He says he cares about his cousins, but then... Whenever A.J. makes a mistake, he loves it. And Edward swears he loves Ned. But he's always yelling at him and embarrassing him, almost as though he enjoys it. Emily, the Quartermains aren't regular people. They never will be. Money and power does that to a person. But you know something? They are capable of love. And I promise you, they are fiercely loyal to each other. <clears throat> and that includes you. I guess that's a good part, right? You bet. Well, it's really nice. Thanks. Um, but I gotta go now. It's school time. Okay. Emily? Mm -hmm. You are welcome here anytime. Thanks. Okay. Would you like to talk to, have me talk to uh, Lucky about uh, this playground business? And I don't want my son to grow up to be a Oh, no, 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 oh, no, sorry, please. Um, I don't think that's okay. Okay, all right. Well, then we'll just wait for him to grow out of it. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Lunch Express. It's an avocado sandwich, isn't it? Lucky, the last six lunches I've made for you were avocado sandwiches. Well, I like them. You know, they're healthy, too. They're jam-packed with vitamin C. You didn't know that, did you? And they're high in fat. And besides, if you eat any one thing too often, you could end up getting really sick of it. Look, there are your food allergies to consider. They cleared up, Mom. Man. I know, Lucky, but they could be reactivated by stress. Mm. And we both know that there's plenty of that going around. I wonder whose fault that is. Let me guess. Would that be your father's and mostly mine? You know, I don't get what the big deal is. I asked for an avocado sandwich. The big deal is you're getting awfully testy lately. And I really wish you'd stop. All right. What is it, anyway? Ham salad. Sweet pickles? Is there any other way? No. Yeah. Ham salad's fine. That's a relief. Yeah. I'll get the rest of my books, okay? Do 
I raise Nick now or wait till he's 16? <laughs> Lucky, I have asked you not to do that. It's hard on the stairs. So is my nerves. Oh, Mom, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I, I think I should just go to General Hospital and get my legs chopped off, okay? Okay. All right. That's it. Sit down. I've got to go, Mom. No, you don't have to go. You've got a full hour before you're doing homeroom. Sit down. Sit. Okay. Flop. You know, I think I know what's going on here. This is called separation, Lucky, and it is healthy and normal, and, and it's right on schedule, and it is critical to your development. Am I supposed to know what you just said? I'd be happy to explain. I am talking about the profoundly repellent, really obnoxious negative attitude that you seem to display on occasion, or really a lot of occasions. That. Yeah. I'm willing to give you that, Lucky. I think that it's time, though, for just a little bit of negotiation, okay? I am willing to let you test out all the boundaries of this antisocial behavior in a safe and loving environment. If you will please remember that I have feelings, and they get hurt. <sighs> okay. To you. Good. Look, I know you're angry with me about everything. You're angry, your father is angry. You know, the three of us are frustrated beyond all reason. Tell me. Tell me. You know, Mom, when you say things like that, and you act all rational about it. That's what makes me the maddest of all. I mean, it's like you, don't, you act like you don't even know what you've done. And you say the words. They don't mean anything, Mom. They don't mean anything because you do not understand how I feel. I'm so angry that it makes me sick. And if I'm not choking on that, I'm choking on Lulu. Being sad and dad being sad. I'm going like to feel bad for you. But I can't. Because you're the reason all this happened. 